Hey, this is Aaron. And Blake, we're AB Data. Thanks for watching our Ultrix tool demonstration videos. In this video, we're taking a look at the multi-row formula tool, which takes the concept of the formula tool in the favorites category a step further, allowing us to utilize row data uh, either above or below a current cell as a part of our expression. Really useful for creating uh, dynamic record IDs, doing averages, uh, and parsing really ugly data. Uh, so really the key to understanding the multi-row formula tool is understanding how the number of rows being exposed really operates, as well as the values for the rows that do not exist yet. So in this case, if row three of our data table is the row currently being acted upon, row minus one and row minus two would both be available data points, but row minus three and minus four are rows that currently do not exist. So we need to teach Alteryx what to do in those scenarios. So we're taking a look at the example canvas for the multi-row formula tool found in the preparation category. The data that we're provided uh, indicates a year only once uh, for the, the first record in each year. Um, and so this is a really common exercise where we would want to fill, fill down that data point until it changes. So we would hope to see 2012 um, filled down all, until the first 2013 record, and then have Alteryx pick up that record and pass it down until it changes once again. So we can uh, use the expression box here, and I'm gonna pull in a conditional function. So we love the flexibility of the syntax of Alteryx. We can break each component here onto a new line. So we're gonna use the isNull function. So as we're operating on an active row, if that year is null, then we want to look up one place. So in the variables list, we now need to be careful if we're using the row plus zero or the active row to reference a variable, or if we want to use the row above or row minus one. And in this case, if our year is null, then we want to pull that value from above. So we would, uh, for the true condition, want row minus one for the year. So if the current year is null, then look above and copy it. Otherwise, leave the year value alone. So you'll notice that the field reference for year doesn't have a plus or minus zero if it's a current year, uh, current row or active row reference. And then the multi-row references will either have a row minus number or a row plus number indicating the direction. So the fill down formula is a very common use case for having the multi-row formula within your workflows. The next example, we're going to create a grouped record ID where the record ID for each product should start at one and then uh, be serialized all the way up until the product changes. So this is the first time we'll use the group by field. So we're going to create a new field called record ID. That record ID is going to be a number. And we're going to look to the row above and add one to it. And this is where the value for the rows that don't exist really comes into play. For record number one, there is not a record above there, so we would want to treat that as zero. Zero plus one is one, so we end up with a record ID of one for product A. And when we get down to record number 31, which is the first record for product B, you see that record ID starts over again, as well as record 61 for product C and so on down the data table. Just a quick shout out to another one of our uh, favorite tools, the tile tool. This tool can be used to really achieve the same exact functionality within our data table. So if we want to have these grouped record IDs, we might choose the unique value method within the tile tool. Lots of flexibility within Alteryx as always. The multi-row tool can be used to reference a variety of different rows in a vertical orientation, either above or below. So let's take a look at creating a three-month average sales field. So we want the current, uh, we have current year and month sales, so the current or active row, as well as row minus one of sales and row minus two of sales. For record number one, row minus one does not exist, row minus two does not exist. So perhaps we want to set the value to the closest valid row. 
So here we can use the average function. And after exposing a different number of rows, I can now easily reference the row minus one of sales, as well as the row minus two of sales. And because we set the value for rows that don't exist to the closest valid row, our average three month sales result for record number one is gonna return 290. The first uh, true three month average sales would be in record number three. The next example is gonna have us taking a look at creating a flag where we're looking at a timestamp, and if that time is less than 30 seconds from the record above it, then we want to say yes, create a flag. So here we can drop in another if-then conditional statement, and using the date-time-difference function, we can look up one cell reference for the clicks field, and counting the number of seconds, determine if it is uh, less than 30 seconds. Thank you for learning with us today. Good luck on your Alteryx journey. For more information on custom training, managed service automations, and more, please visit our website at abdataconsulting.com.